This is Gabriel Gonzalez for Cage Side Press, and I am here with UFC heavyweight Jared the Mountain Vandera, who fights Andre Orlovsky at UFC 271 on February 12th. Uh, Jared, first of all, uh, if I'm not mistaken, congratulations, because this is now first Christmas with another little one. Just talk to me. How was that? Now you got two little munchkins running around during the holidays. Uh... You know, I should aim for the face uh, because kids are just wild. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not the best kid person. Uh, spite, spite what people say, I, I'm not the best kid person. That they, they whine a lot. Like everyone's like, oh, baby, baby, the baby age is the best. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> just look at it. You like down and just look at it and then it cries because you're not picking it up enough like i like toddler age a lot more because even though they're like on crackhead mode the whole day if you actually say something if they refuse to listen to you at least you know they're doing wrong with the baby they just look at you like i don't know what the hell you're saying sir so i i, I like my luckily my baby's cute like like, if she was an ugly baby, I don't know. <laughs> You'd be in more trouble. Is that what you're saying, Jared? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, like, you know, people out there are like, oh, no babies are, uh, there's no such thing as an ugly baby. They're lying to you. They're lying <laughs> to yourself. Like, like the biggest fear was having an ugly baby. Was it the first well, one? They, you? So I was they like, take after mom, right? They take after mom. Thank God. Even though everyone says the baby. <laughs> Like me, I'm like, maybe I was a cute baby. Like, not anymore. So I'm hoping they take after mom, especially in the later years. Well, there you go, man. I'm glad to hear it. So you only have two, right? Yes, that I know of. So uh, how has that been, the you know, the change? Because obviously when it's just one, it's like zone defense. Now when it's two, you're going man to man. I mean, that's a completely different sport now. How do you and your wife manage, you know, when both of them are going off, are you good at, hey, you got this one, I got that one? Or is it more like one person has to be the MVP and take care of them both? Um, she definitely takes care of the baby and I take care of the toddler. Um, she, she's a, she, you know, she's equipped more to handle the baby. She's like, boom, boom, here, enjoy, be happy. All I can do is like change a diaper. So, I mean, feed, feeding is out of the question. Or... Uh, and you know she's my daughter's picky uh she doesn't like bottles so i'm just like can we just throw away this one or like recycle it <laughs> uh, gonna take it back to the store and get a different one yeah exactly it's broken it cries all the time i'm just like oh. sleep uh, i mean like with my first one it was a little bit easier because i was working nights so i was like i was getting home at three four in the morning so for some reason the baby would be up from like like when I was at work. So we would all actually go to bed at like three in the morning and sleep just fine. This baby is like, nah, we would stand up until <laughs> one. I'll wake up at two, three, four, five. You know what? Stay up from five to eight, scream as loud as possible. You're like, I get why people shake babies every now and then. <laughs> Oh my gosh, man. <laughs> look, I know it's tough, but hang in there, man. I know you're good. And uh, look, I think for anyone watching, you are very good about on social media. I like the one, your toddler teaching the baby MMA already. I thought that was very adorable. And also, Loki, Jared, you have quite the TikTok game. You will be sharing, and I gotta say, I don't think people appreciate your creativity on TikTok enough, man. I mean, talk to me about this. Do you just really enjoy getting out there and having fun, or do you, were you just like, you know, people are giving me some good ideas, and I got people watching? All right, so like things I want to put on TikTok, I have, I have to hold back on a few things. Uh, like, all right, so I love messing with some of my students. I had, I had like. One of my biggest video is me fucking with one of my friends. Known him for fucking like four or five years. He's one of like he was one of my students. Now he, you know, he's a client of Lauren's now. Like the family is close and all that stuff. 
Now, like, we're not the, like, the, the, like, we're the best of best of friends, but we're friends, you know, like, so we fuck with each other. Now, he is also the smallest of, like, three or four brothers. <laughs> so guess who got beat up on as a little kid? He oh, did. my gosh. So, you know, he he likes to fuck around with me, right? Like, me and him fuck around all the time. Like, I'm the same size as, as his older brother, so we all fuck off and we fuck around. And so I posted a video of us fucking around. And they're like, oh, my God, why are you picking on him? He's so little. I can't believe you hurt him. I'm like, do you see him laughing? Do you see the, like, the, the playful demeanor? Like, oh, no. Like, one guy was like, no, you're a bully. If you pick on anyone smaller than you, I'm like, dude, we're homies. He's like, no, you're a bully. You're a coward. I'm like, we are literally friends. I'm like, and I'm like, does, I'm like, do I hold my argument of, like, hey, he literally started this shit first, and I just took my opportunity to whip out a camera and record this shit. It's like, no, it's just, I hate TikTok because there's a lot of dumb fucking people on it. <laughs> And everyone's like, oh, no. And then there's times where, like, if I'm picking on someone my size, oh, well, they're not doing this good enough. They're not. I'm like, God, you guys bitch a lot. Like, I like TikTok, but there's a lot of just whiny ass bitches on it, too. You know what? It, it, that's the double edged sort of social media. It's both so fun and just so infuriating. Believe it, me, I, I get but, him in. I, I, I but, mean, sometimes. Like I wish it was legal just to punch a person in the face every now and then. I think I think we like as society we've stepped back away from actual physical altercations uh, because people take it to extremes. But I'm th- I'm saying like we should all be given allowed like yearly one punch to the face, just one, and done. <laughs> because I am so over everybody just like. Uh, I'm just so over everybody, so I'm just like, we need to punch people every now and then. It's uh, like you want the purge light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, will, I will even go, like, purge light. Like, I'd be like, purge micro light. Like, <laughs> just a punch, you get one punch a year. Like, when you get a cannon, like, oh, you didn't give me a ranch and throw the food at the customer, like, at the service or cashier, that cashier should get that one bah, right to the face. It <laughs> might not be the hardest, but they should be allowed one punch, and no one should be like, oh, how could you? That, that bitch deserved it. And that's how I feel about social media. I'm just like... You know what the... You know, it's the one problem with that strategy is, like, it sounds so beautiful when someone really pisses you off, but then you realize, you know what, you can't, it's like uh, potato chips and pistachios. You can't have just one. True. People, that, that's, a, you know, people be like, nah, there, there are multiple people. That, that, that's why it's a slippery slope, man. It yeah. sounds fun in theory, but it's like, ah, oh. suddenly like, wait, no, someone's well, getting left out and we can't have that. I would <laughs> suggest people, if they need more, save it to the end of the year. <laughs> so you get like, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Like, bah, bah. You, you want some rollover minutes, that's what you want. <laughs> no, or, man. If you haven't punched anyone, a crude punches are coming. It's like, <laughs> because if you're a person that hasn't hit anyone in 10 years, and you piss off that person, you deserve the, the 10 extra hits that they had. You know what? All right. Very fair. Very, very fair. Uh, Jared, let me talk to you about some business. Um, first off, let's take one step back. What happened in December? Because obviously you were, you know, last minute fight, one week notice. I believe it was the morning of weigh-ins. They say, hey, he's not able to compete. What exactly did they say? Was it just the weight discrepancy? Was it just they didn't feel something comfortable with it because it was such short notice? What did they say? Okay, so it actually has nothing to do with weight. Uh, so I made a comment about uh, some past me- medical stuff. Now, like, I made the comment knowing that I could back it up my claims of, uh, like, that I was medically clear. Like, I had I had actual proof that the UFC had. Like, so I made a comment about my past medical claims. I'm like, oh, yeah. And they're like, what, you have this? I'm like, no, because you already have all my medicals about this stating I don't 
and they're like now and they're like oh we're now unsure of this so you have to prove that you don't have it so i had to go through a bunch of other channels to actually get to show them again that i did not have this um medical now the medical condition that we're speaking of is marfan syndrome it's not necessarily uncommon disease but it's not very common and um one of the best ways to kind of diagnose it if you kind of have it it's not the perfect way without a full genetic test but one of the best ways is a uh, heart echo i was given a heart echo before i fought speed back in january now that usually carries weight in you know with a lot of doctors that actually specialize in marfans and so i was like no i have a heart echo clearing me of this potential disease and they're like no we're not gonna look for it basically so me and the doctor and i okay in their defense i fucking hate doctors okay i think most of them are fucking idiotic and stupid and so let's just say i wasn't the most sweetest to them either like like i started kind of getting snappy with it so there could have been a little of that played playing a part of it too but because of the comment they're like oh we have to double check now. We have to make a big ordeal about it. I get cleared. I even go as far as getting a genetic test, which would fully prove if I did or did not have it. That came back negative. And so, I mean, I'm cleared to fight. And I was actually supposed to fight the 15th of January against Chris Barnett. Oh. Uh, but the day I officially get medically cleared and get my medical done, like, your yearly medicals. Um, I get a call from. Um, I call my manager. I'm like, hey, I'm clear. Like, I'm all good. Uh, the, like, the specialist, honestly, from his per- like, this is before I even got the actual test. He's like, yeah, the dude cleared me. Uh, he and all this stuff, and they're like, oh well, your opponent just got hurt. I'm like, motherfucker, I went through this <sighs> fucking nothing. Uh, so that that was fun. Before I lose you, Jared, scoot yourself a little bit to the left. Yeah, that way, you know, making sure you're not getting cut off. All right, so uh, I believe you cut out just slightly a little bit at the beginning, but you had let them know, hey, this has happened, but we've had it cleared already by, by UFC previously. Did I miss that part at the beginning a little bit? Uh, okay, so because I didn't like go, this is something that's been brought up before like it was just the fact that i had our the heart echo would have cleared me but just because it's not necessarily a common disease so the doctors were lack of a better term ignorance on the whole thing and because of that they kind of postponed the fight and all that stuff and now i'm not mad at the doctors or the ufc especially the ufc due to the fact that they have to cover their asses as a corporation because their their business isn't like their business they are trying to take care of first if they let one one person fight because they they're like oh i'm good i'm good and then they die now like let's say my family goes after them or tries to sue them now we're, they're jeopardizing hundreds and thousands of employees that did absolutely nothing wrong because of one person saying some shit. So I think it was a, like, I don't want to say it was a good call, but it was just, like, I get the call from the UFC on why they, they had to do what they had to do. And, you know, now I'm cleared and I get to punch uh, Mr. Orlovsky in the face in two weeks. wanted this one for a minute i did want to ask you you know coming off that your previous fight last year because you went one on one you obviously got the win over mr top uh, uh, next one doesn't go your way i mean everyone you know as usual you go back to the gym what did you take away from it what did you feel just went wrong and you got to into the gym to work on oh uh, so one of the biggest things was just a mental flaw like i have going against wrestlers uh, kind of the same thing with Spivak and Romanov was I kept on just like overplaying these guys like oh my god they're they're at this level and this and that and I never really gave myself the credit that I needed to do to actually get, properly hang with them like like looking back at my first fight against Spivak I like there was times where I'm like oh I'm doing proper things and then 
I'm just like, oh, what if I like I start overthinking in the moment to the point where it's like I overthought it to the point where I lost the fight because I was like, oh, oh, if I do this, they're going to do that. Like, like it became so like like I got so ahead of the game that things that didn't happen. And then I put myself in a bad predicament where eventually I just lost the fight. Like I just over over analyzed everything. And like the Romanoff fight was maybe a bit a bit of a few things. One being the mental side of it. Two could have been just the physical because I just had uh, my youngest born and training was kind of hectic because uh, I had to go like uh, like uh, I want to say it was like eight weeks. Uh, yeah, like eight to ten weeks um, after my daughter was or uh, uh, eight to ten weeks of that fight. Uh, before that fight, my daughter was born, and uh, my daughter had really bad jaundice, and that was a whole, like, that took me, like, three or four days, uh, just a bunch of crazy things like that, that my training suffered, and maybe I should have waited a little bit longer on the Romanov fight, uh, but n- that happened, uh, and, you know, the combination of my mental and maybe uh, physical from not as training as much as I would like to or properly training because again I had a newborn it kind of bit me in the ass uh, but I would say that if I had an opportunity to I think fight either of those gentlemen I, I think at my like the outcome would have been different or at least the fight would have looked different uh, it would have been more of a, um, a back and forth instead of kind of just lay there and get my ass kicked um so it just it, like some of the personal things that just got the best of me, which kind of bit me in the ass. Uh, so hopefully now uh, going in, well, you know, my daughter's almost six months old. Uh, you know, we have a good routine. And, you know, it's working out quite well for us. Um, and yeah, taking Orlowski on a short notice, but like. Like, I had, like, five weeks to prepare for Orlowski, and I had three weeks to Chris, uh, prepare for Chris Barnett. Uh, so, I mean, I've been in camp for the last eight weeks, or going into eight weeks. So, I'm I'm actually really excited uh, for this fight. I think I'm going to, to the point where I honestly believe I think I'm going to be Orlowski. I mean, I, I know, for one, you've been talking about this fight for a bit. You said, all due respect, you want to get in there and mix it up with a guy like Andre and I, I do want to bring that up because although it is short notice, and I'm assuming they announced it rather recently, how much, how long before the announcement did you know that, hey, this is in the works to be added to that pay-per-view? Uh, oh, uh, I want to say a day. Oh, wow. All right, All right so- yeah, so... So they really, you know, they really brought you guys in to really, you know, pump this card up is what I noticed. Because I was like, hey, you know, a guy like Andre Arlovsky, you know, getting added to something, you know, th- that tends to be in the works a while. So uh, I do think that that's very notable. Yeah. So I, I got so I got officially medically cleared uh, either the 5th or 6th of January. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's when I call and I get my medicals done. Uh, for Vegas and stuff, because I'm, like I said, I was about to fight Chris Barnett. I got a call the day uh, uh, to fight Chris Barnett, day before Christmas. So I told myself, enjoy Christmas, because I also told my manager, I'm like, hey, my my appointment for uh, the genetic and Marfan test isn't until January 6th. He was like, I don't know if that will be... Was it? I don't know if the UFC will allow that. So I was like, okay, well, I'll see what I could do. And uh, so I told myself, this fight's a good 50-50. So he's like, I'll talk to the UFC. You enjoy Christmas. So I enjoy Christmas. Boom. And then that Monday, it's just I start training. I start picking things up, making sure I start dieting and stuff. You know, just in case the UFC is like, hey, do it. Uh, I started talking to the, the medical coordinator. He's like, hey, you know, let's try this route. You know, we started trying different routes to kind of expedite this. But at the end, I we had to go with the original plan that I set forth. But the UFC was like, hey, you're good. 
he goes, the fact that you did take the fight on three weeks or the fact that you accepted the fight, you're doing everything to, you know, show that you're ready. We're going to hold out on you. So they, they held, held out on me. And then I call him after I get, I, I'm leaving the hospital after I get all my uh, diagnosis checked out. I call up and he's like, yeah, he's hurt. I'll know more tomorrow. He calls me the next day. It's like, hey, well, they're going to look for somebody. And I'm like, all right, cool. Uh, and then Sunday rolls around. I'm like, I'm going to take assumption that they haven't found anybody. He's like, yeah. So, I, But I'm, like for some reason, in the back of my mind, I was like, hey, you know, it's like you just restarted dieting again. You're trying to cut weight. Don't don't be a fucking idiot. So I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm like, OK, right, I'm going to maintain my diet. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, then Wednesday comes and I get a message from my manager and he was like, yo, Orlowski this weekend. I was like, oh. <laughs> like, I, like I fucking just, sc- I scream in the room. I'm like, oh my fucking God. Yes. Yes. He was like, wait a minute. I, I might have something even better for you. I'm like, Dude, you can't, you, <laughs> that is the cherry on top of better for me. And he was like, no, I got you. I got you. Uh, uh, I'll let you know in the morning. Because I get this message at around like 8, 9 o'clock at night. So, Oh, wow. <laughs> so I, I, I'm, I'm, he, goes, he goes, I'm not for sure yet, but I might be able to get you something better. So I'm like, okay, fuck. So I, I'm apprehensive to eat at night, too. I'm just like, I got I like, got cut a lot of weight tonight to fight Olowski Saturday. I'm like, I'm like, because like I said, I was, cut, I was cutting <laughs> – Give me a second. You're good. Uh, so I was cutting weight uh, to get ready for the Barnett fight. fight. But I was cutting like from like 285, 290, some, some, something a little ridiculous like that. So I was like, fuck. But like that night, I was about 282. I'm like, all right, I can make that weight cut. I don't want to, but I'm like, all right. I'm like, you know what? Fuck, I want to eat. Uh, and I'm like, so I'm about 282 or so, 280. I'm just like, I, I need to, like, I want to eat just in case, you know, he might postpone it. And then he goes, hey, Jared, we got you the contract, but you're fighting on UFC 271. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> so I signed the contract literally Thursday morning. Uh, when he calls me, I'm like, yeah, Jason, sign it, you know, do, do your thing. And then, yeah, it was announced the next day that we were fighting. And so, so yeah, that's a long whirlwind of how I ended up here fighting Orlowski in Houston in less than two weeks. Can I ask you a wild question, Jared? Cause it crossed my mind because uh, you've seen it, you know, the last few weeks, um, you know, I don't know if it's travel, the vid, or anything else, but it seems like a bunch of matchups have gone shuffled. If they call you fight week and say, Jared, something happened with the heavyweights, we need you to fight either Derek Lewis or Ty Tui Voss on the main card. What's your reaction? Fuck it. Let's go. <laughs> no, no, because that that is a that is a real thing. Because, you know, what if... You know, what, like, what was it? Orlowski coming from Florida. Yeah. They're a little bit less lenient. Now, I do I do want to say, because we're in Texas, they're not going to have such harsh restrictions because they don't it's care. It's Texas. Yeah. It, it's <laughs> Texas. So I believe that might not be an issue. But now let's say, let's say Orlowski cuts his thumb the day before weigh-ins or something like that. And let's say Derek Lewis or Ty Tuvasa, you know, break a pinky toe and they don't want to fight. And they're like, hey, do you want to fight Derek or Ty? I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll fight Derek or Ty. And like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, you don't want to fight Ty Tuvasa. I'm like, well, I already beat one of his teammates up. So, I mean... Like he he was big and tough too, so and it's not like 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 I, I kind of accepted the fact that everyone in this weight class is my size. Like 
they and like certain people look so much fucking bigger on TV, and then you see them in person, you're like, you little bro, like <laughs> you ain't you ain't as scary as like like I have seen Derek Lewis in person. He's big, but he like it like see him on TV and see him in person, you're like, you know what? Doesn't fucking chance. I was like. <laughs> Derek Lewis has lost before. He's lost to a decent amount of people, yeah. like a handful of people. So it's like if you put yourself in like the right mindset and the right ability, it's like, yeah, you can win this, you know? So it's just one of those things where you're just like, all right, cool. Uh, if I have to fight Derek Lewis tied to Avasta or fucking, you know, they switch up opponent. It wouldn't be the first time I've had to take a... I've had a short notice fight where I was supposed to fight someone on a week notice. They canceled during weigh-ins. They had someone else replaced. And then he cancels, and another guy shows up four hours later. Wow. And they, and all of them were... You know, this was all approved by CSAC, too. <laughs> so, I mean, like... CSAC is one of the harder organizations to work with, but the fact that, like, I was 2-0, and the first guy they offered me was 1-0, and and they were able to get another guy to do a satellite weigh-in, like, four or five hours out, and he was 2-1. and And so, like, I just got lucky with a bunch of people with the right weight and stuff like that, boom, and I won that fight. So, you know, if they're like, hey, uh, Ty Tuvasa slipped on a banana peel and Orlowski cut his finger. You you got Derek Lewis tonight. Um, yes, there I, you am, go. I am poking fun of a particular heavyweight fighter uh, for that comment. <laughs> oh my um, God. Who, who could it be? <laughs> but no, I mean, I mean, look, either way, it would be so exciting, Jared. I, I, and, you know, look, the fight with Andre... How far back on tape do you go back? Because, I mean, look, you could go back to the times of UFC double digits and he was out there and you could find his fights on the internet. So how far back do you go in terms of watching the tape? At least to high school. So that was about <laughs> 12 years ago. There you go. Uh, 12 to 15 years ago. So... It's been a minute of uh, watching him and being a fan. Uh, now, these later years, I haven't. I've watched more of his fights against some of the dudes that he's fought more recently. Yeah. Uh, so to fight him again, or to actually have that chance to fight him before, you know, he starts considering hanging up the gloves and stuff. You know, it's a real honor. And the nice thing is, he's not like if I beat him now, I'm not beating up uh, the Orlowski that was like zero and seven for a minute or like, like one and six or some, some wild. He's, he's four and one in the last five fights. So it's a good, good opportunity to fight him. And I think, uh, excuse me. Uh, I think uh, that will truly kind of open up my uh, beating him might solidify me as a UFC fighter. Um, uh, because you got like someone like uh, another person I called out like two days before fucking this uh, fight came together was Tanner Bozer. Now Tanner Bozer lost to him, but he's kind of slid him, solidified himself as a UFC heavyweight. You know, like he seems like he's going to be a mainstay for a minute. And, you know, let's say I'd be Orlowski. Boom. I'd be Orlowski. Now I'm not a mainstay. You know, like I'm, I become a mainstay. It's yeah. like, beat Orlowski. This guy is, you know, not a joke. This guy actually is put in time and effort and, you know, he's maybe someone that we should actually, you know, garner a little bit more respect for. So I'm hoping that's the case and let's see. Uh, and once that happens, you know, we'll see what doors are opened. Uh, but right now, you know, I'm just kind of just looking forward to this fight. I, I really would like to share the cage with such a, like a legend. Motherfucker's been fighting since I was like, fucking seven years old yeah i mean look i think that's one of the better ones i feel like every time i look on something like tapology it seems like it's very vague on where you guys might actually end up i feel like looking at that card i wouldn't mind see you seeing you guys on the pay-per-view 
I could see you guys being the featured prelim. Do you have an idea about where you guys are going to fall? No, because I believe they gave out the main event or the main card already for UFC uh, 271. And we were on it. Now, that doesn't bother me. I do think we would be somewhere on the prelims. Where on the prelims, I genuinely don't care. Uh, but I do think we'll be on the prelims. I don't see us being on early prelims. Uh, because I think, you know, you, you don't throw Orlovsky there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that, like, with, like, how I fought Tafa being a fight of night, a winner that's also something to be you know be something to attest to you know like it's not like it's just oh some dude that's you know hasn't achieved shit in the ufc i've actually achieved something that i know some fighters fought like 10 times and haven't achieved it yet you know and so to have that plus you know orlowski on an early prelim i just i don't see it happening but hey who fucking knows? It it's some strange times going on right now. Uh, so we could be the first fight of the fucking card. Be a little weird, but hey, at the at least if we're the first fight on the card, I can watch most of the other fights. There so. you go. There you go. Nah, for sure. I definitely get what you're saying. Uh, my final question. I always like to check in with you. What's Jared Bandera watching lately in terms of anime? Has he gone back to Gundam? Has he? I saw you opening the packs of the Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Have you gone back to that? I mean, what what's on the playlist lately when you have time, when the kids are actually giving you enough peace that you actually can think about something else? All right. Uh, so I say earlier this week, I finished the time I, re- the time I was reincarnated as a slime season two. Ooh. I really, that one, that one hit differently. I was like, like, I, I was just kind of, like, going to watch it to kind of be background noise. But, like, not even, like, five, ten minutes in, I'm like, this fucking... I'm like, the dude just got stabbed. Like, all right. Wait, what? What? Oh, oh okay. This, this... this all right. I, I'm, in, I'm into it. So, so I, I get into that one. And then I, I've, I've been kind of trying to figure out what to watch next. Uh... I've been kind of just hitting a speed bump because I kind of don't want to finish the final season of Attack on Titan just yet uh, for a few reasons. One, like, I, I finally hunkered down earlier last year to watch it to see really what the hype was about. And, I mean, it was a good storyline, but it came, it came pretty predictable halfway through it. And I'm just like, uh... And I kind of have a feeling of where I know where this is going in the last season so i'm i'm kind of just i don't necessarily want to watch it so i'd be disappointed um let's see i just started the world uh end of the world's harem i think or the world the world's end harem that one that that one that one i i'm only i've caught up to episode two i think there's only three out so i have to watch uh, episode three uh, the premise is going good, though I already want to slap the shit out of the main character. Like, oh my god. <laughs> like, I like I like the storyline, and I think there's definitely room for this to be a really good anime. Uh, but I, I want to slap the shit out of the main character. Uh, especially because, like, in his situation, he's one of the most selfish people I fucking know. I'm like, this bitch. I'm, I want to slap <laughs> You are one of five guys on this planet. And you have the gene to potentially save. Oh, no, you want to find this girl that might love you? Like, <laughs> it's like, you, you find out pretty quickly, like, like, like the deniability of her or and whatnot. But I'm just like, Ugh, like, you're playing, you, I'm like, dude, you're just being a dick. <laughs> um, but it was just one of those things, like, uh, but as of this morning, I started rewatching the OG Gundam, um, just just because you know it's a classic. I actually posted why not, on, right? I actually posted that on my Instagram story, and I started shit on Instagram too. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so those are kind of the things I've been watching. Um, 
Yeah, but I, I'm kind of uh, so my Yu-Gi-Oh card collection. I've kind of put a, a halt to it, not because I want to, uh, because my bitch ass is broke. Um, you know, I've been trying to use the money for my fight career to like get out of debt from all my past mistakes. So I haven't been able to spend uh, much money on my Yu-Gi-Oh card collection, but. That will soon change. Uh, I definitely want to get on uh, some of the newer packs. Uh, I, I believe there's one that's heavily fiend related, so I'm excited for that. And yeah, that's where I'm at in life with my Yu-Gi-Oh and uh, anime happenings. Do you like to play new rules, like with you know the link, you know the link spaces and everything, or do you play like OG 2000 rules with okay. the five regular monster slots? So I'm still a little behind on the new rules. I I'm more I'm I'm definitely more open to learn it. And uh, if you play some of these new rules uh, against like some OG OG rules, oh you get fucked. You get fucked hard. I remember oh, yeah. I got hit with like five dragon cards in like a matter of two turns. I'm like, the fuck, bro. Um, then I I remember um. I remember he hit me with like five dragons and then I just got lucky and I was able to pull uh, the maiden of blue eyes and I put her in uh, I, I some of the maiden blue eyes and I put like uh, I want to say graveyard and invitation when you attack uh, maiden of blue eyes you summon the blue eyes with a white dragon and he was the strongest monster so I just obliterated everyone in the graveyard invitation you take like 300 damage for every card you have in the graveyard and because they were like playing like 52 cards that like he went through half his deck literally in a span of a couple seconds and playing right. that fucking killed the whole show so i was like yeah finally <laughs> my ass. yeah i will say that's probably one of my least favorite things that they've done i haven't you know the thing is i'm not against playing it's just like with time and scheduling it's just so hard to find people to play that even if it's like oh let me get the cards and go through that it's like ah oh, you know by the time you get it it's like ah, no offense but i got two jobs i got stuff to do you know like almost i don't want to say it's like i need to be in a yeah i got lucky uh we have a place here like, time for it but we'll get through in one turn and it's like uh, i mean i know that there's a strategy to that but that uh, on the other end that almost makes it a little boring and i was like ah oh, come on you know that's no fun that's not what it was like in the cartoon y'all remember you remember jared i know you do yeah rewatched it was it i want to say like two years ago like the beginning of the pandemic <laughs> I'll the good old days. Uh, they did, but, hey, they did the social distance when they sat down to play. Remember those days? Yeah. Well, they had three feet. Close enough. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, I did want to answer, Jared. Do you see, like, um, do you think you can get your girls into building Gundams with you when they reach that age that they can appreciate the kids? Or what do you think? you think it may not be for them? Um... I see kind of which one wants to kind of go that route. It's not like, uh, for example, I don't, I don't try to force my girls into the fighting scene. They, you know, they see me do it all the time, but I never try to force them. The only thing I force is if like my oldest daughter, if she jumps into class, the only thing I tell her is you jump into class, you finish class. That's it. Like, I, like, I don't like, I just want her to like kind of learn that if you start something, you kind of finish it type of mentality but outside of that i don't really force her to try to do anything if it's something that piques their interest the older they get i'll be a little bit more inclined to kind of do it so that that just kind of depends on whether or not my daughters want to do it or not i'm not i'll never be like you must do this with me you know uh my job is to show them the experiences that you know show them some things but they have to choose the experience that they really want to cater to well, I really love that message. I think that's when you know you're doing it good. So 
Jared, I mean, certainly first off, if I haven't talked to you since then, congratulations on welcoming another one to the family. And certainly for this fight coming up, it's always fun to watch it. You and Andre Orlovsky is going to be a fun one. And yeah, just do you have any final message for the people who are going to be tuning in about two weeks from now? Uh, just enjoy the show. Uh, enjoy us punching each other. You know, uh, just remember Captain Insano shows no mercy. And yeah, if you want to find me on any social media, uh, just look up Jared Vandera and you could say hi to me there. I most likely will not respond because I'm terrible at responding to some messages. Well, hey, don't, we won't take it personal, I'm sure. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Jared Vandera taking on Andre Orlovsky at UFC 271 coming up on February 12th. You're not going to want to miss it.